Just gonna, I'm still just happy about that fake laugh I got that one time. I'm just gonna ride high on that. Nice. Nice. Thank you. Bullet. Okay, so if you go first, you're biting the bullet, is what they call it. That's what I'm gonna be doing tonight. Technically, I'm hosting, so the, uh, I'm not actually biting the bullet. My job as the host tonight is to warm it up, so hopefully the crowd is ready to go for the first act. <laughs> I'm uh, Derek Adams. Uh, I, I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm trying to be a stand-up comedian in any ways, I suppose. Uh, like, I wouldn't like list that on like a resume as like my employment, just because I make no money doing it. But I would like to call myself a stand-up comedian for sure. All right, time for a very important pre-game. Uh, some McDonald's. I uh, gotta get that good food in you to make sure you can perform your best out there. Give it 110. Uh, you know, get the legs moving. Uh, work hard. Work as a team. When is a team lose? As a team. To me, jokes are kind of like. They're almost puzzly, like you get to kind of craft them. I'm not a good writer in terms of like I couldn't write a book, but I feel like I'm okay at putting together little jokes. And then I like developing them and then bringing them on stage. And it's the only kind of performance where you get kind of the instant gratification of, oh, that was good, people laughed, or oh, that was really bad, nobody laughed at it at all. And I just think, yeah, I think it's a cool, it's a cool thing that I'm good at, and I don't feel like I'm good at a lot of things. Let's let's tell them. So what's happening at that room? I'm up right now. Oh, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, everyone, I like the I like that the community is kind of smaller, so you get to know everybody. There's less people that are like big timey. Uh, like trying to like rip off people or something like that that like, you hear stories about. So I, I love, yeah, I love the rooms in Calgary. I love, I think there's some really good comics. But I have a million people in the cover spot. Well, if someone wants to get up, I can just do 10. I think inspiration can come from maybe something that like, that's how you come up with a joke is you live your life, something happens, and then I put it down in my phone and try to go somewhere with it. I wouldn't say I have a super personal stand-up act because I don't I, I don't think everything has to be a hundred percent true. Like a, most of my jokes are just jokes. I think you pull it from real life and then real life usually isn't funny enough and then you try to push it just to the point of it's still believable but it's ridiculous enough that it's funny. The easiest way as a comedian is to blame the audience. Um, I read a quote Chris Rock, I was reading, I'm reading a Judd Apatow book and he interviews comedians and Chris Rock was saying how like comedians that start out always blame the audience when it goes badly, but when it goes good they don't give them credit. Like if you have a great show you don't just say well the audience was really nice, you say oh I'm just super funny. Gay and 100% straight also and he was like you think you're 100% straight don't you? And I'm like yeah kind of and he goes so does spaghetti till it's wet and I was like oh shit that makes sense. <laughs> Spaghetti does bend under hot water. I guess I'm a little gay now. Absolutely. Comedy is not a thing where you can do good and nobody's laughing. Like you can't, like I feel like you can have a movie that does well and people maybe don't, like maybe the audience didn't love it, but like you can still call it a good movie. You can't call it a good stand-up act if nobody laughed because inherently you're a live performer and you're trying to impress the people that are here. So I'm like super broke right now. Yeah. But like it's extra embarrassing for me because I'm an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> I do that shit for a living and somehow I've not figured out how to not blow it all on booze and artisan bread. <laughs> it's like I went to school for money management and all I learned how to do was drink out of a funnel. <laughs> I paid $30,000 for a binge drinking problem. <laughs> I was like pretty drunk. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, so the way it worked was actually like similar to this. My friend was at SAIT 
and she wanted to do a documentary about me doing stand-up for the first time. So that way I couldn't like chicken out because they had like the thing there. Uh, so yeah, then I just got like too drunk and went on stage and I was like, oh, this makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> and then I kept doing it. Musicality in there, in the bits, with some funny sound effects. Right now, one of my funny sound effects that I'm working with that I end one of my stories on is <laughs> And I do it with this hand gesture, so it's like a floop, 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 flies away. And yeah, I don't know, just funny sounds. Because if you can't be funny with your words, just try to be funny for the audience in the way that like moms are funny to babies. Give them a couple peekaboos, you know? Just that, that primal level of funny. Of just, I don't know, where did he go? Where is he? Peekaboo. Oh, he's right there. <laughs> she says, sir, I'm sorry, but even if you could tap, your transaction's over $150. So tap would be, you're disqualified from tap. Sandy! <laughs> I've got $150 in groceries, because shit's going well for me right now. <laughs> Look at that artisanal butter. That's tw twice the price, half the size. It's going good. I got that $150 groceries money. Think I'm gonna get the beef L margarine for your non tapping ass? It ain't happening. Next thing I know, you're gonna tell me to insert. And I'm about to insert my way on out of here. She says, sir, that's not what the word insert means. I say, I'm going to Superstore. And I get on my hoverboard and I foo 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 foo. I don't, that's, that's just one of the fun things about comedy, is that you put a premise out there, could start at like a 70% funny, and then you just have to do these jokes hundreds of times, so you might as well just be always working on it, just polishing that stone. Uh, there's a documentary crew filming this for either a uh, national TV or a student project, one of those two. <laughs> So that's really good. Can I get, can I get a big, huge, uh, just humor me for a second. On the count of three, can I get a big, huge, fake laugh on one, two, three. <laughs> Please. That's great. We're totally going to edit that in. In all my jokes, I'm going to kill everyone.